Hello everybody, it is me, Sacred G. Welcome back to another fucking grand spanking new video and another fucking banger. My videos are 100% perfect all the time. I am just joking. So today, I or this video is going to be about <coughs> my shitty experience working at McDonald's. I decided fucking why not. I'll tell the story how I pretty much just uh, walked the fuck on out. Because I just couldn't fucking tolerate the workplace. Because let's be honest, the management, most, not all, but the management shitty in some locations. Um, and when they're shitty in those locations, they're quite bad. Um, and to preface this, I am not saying that every single McDonald's location is terrible. I do know that there are some pretty good ones out there that you could work at you know fortunately but unfortunately like pretty much any job out there their mcdonald's is a mixed bag pretty much like any other job so uh also i worked at two locations i want to make that perfectly clear as well so that way you know there's no confusion so uh for those that may have worked with me um watching i actually liked the first location um but when i came back home uh, due to a living scenario situation, <sighs> I applied to probably the the biggest mistake of a building I, I've ever worked at thus far when it comes to fast food and McDonald's as a whole. This was like my last straw with McDonald's and just a big, just a big indent on that. So without further ado, let's get this show started. All right, so this started in the summer of 2020. This was like mid-August when I applied, and I know you may be asking, Sacred, why are you telling us how the application process goes? When other people do it, it's actually kind of dumb because obviously you got the job. That is not what I'm going to talk about, but there is actually something that it kind of started a little before I even started working there. So I apply, right? It, on the website, it tells me to call the location I applied to, and I did that. Um, I gave them a call. Somebody picked up, and they're like, uh, well, we'll have a manager call you back, and we'll, we'll, we'll set something up and everything like that, right? I was told I would have gotten a call back. I would have gotten something the end of September rolls around. Okay, this was, I applied again much earlier than that. Um, I applied, like, literally the middle or the second, third week in the middle of September because I realized these people were so incompetent before I even fucking started working there. <laughs> or the management was that bad before I fucking started working there that uh, I had to reapply. And the funny thing is, and I even thought about this, I believe is like, I think when I was thinking of just leaving the fucking place to begin with, um, I <laughs> remember thinking back when I walked in for my interview, the guy who ends up, is going to end up being the, the biggest problem I had with the place, to be honest. Um, he, he saw, I told him my name um, when I walked in. He's like, oh, you're so-and-so. And I even think he said something about I applied the, like last month or something like that. And if that was the case, holy fuck, I should have just turned the fuck around and just walked and went back home and continued my job search. Because uh, to be completely honest, that's a massive red flag. They could have called me. They they could have done pretty much all of that because they ended up hiring me literally a month later. So I don't know how, you know, you know who I was when you didn't call me back. So uh, a little bit of a red flag. Um, so the interview and one more thing about the interview, you told me some, uh, it was a lie. It ended up being a complete fucking lie. He told me that, oh, if there's a place or a certain area that uh, you you find uncomfortable, just let one of our us managers know. This guy's an assistant manager, so he was one of the people he was referring to. Um, and so, literally, I think it was like my first or second week, um, I told him, uh, I do not feel comfortable with Grill. That's what... I was on mainly um, because I came from doing customer service and I was more comfortable doing that because I knew exactly how to do that. And <laughs> the guy literally says, and this is in his words, this guy's a manager. He's like, oh, I'll get back to you on that. This is the guy that hired me. Uh, I'll, get, I'll get back to you on that. I'll get back to you on that. And the funniest thing is my intuition is so good that I knew he wasn't going to get back to me on anything. I just had the feeling that this guy likes to come off very cool and everything, which he did. 
Um, however, he's just a, a fucking snake in the grass. Or in this case, the snake in the grease. Um, because he never got back to me, and I would always go, like, check in when I when we'd clock in, and it got to the point where I was thrown on grill so much that I just lost faith in him as a, as a boss, to be honest. I mean, he told me he would do something. You kind of gotta do what you fucking tell your employee that you're gonna do, you know? Um, also, within my first week, I, if I remember correctly, um, one of the one of the coworkers I had, who ended up being a weird kid, anyways, told me that the best way to get on the manager's good side is to basically suck their dick and do their job. That's literally what was told to me, and uh, I don't know if that's 100% true, but they did ask us to do shit that they should have done all the time. Like the fry hopper stuff was their job. We did the pies because I was the grill team, so we did the pies and the grill, they did the fries and the drinks and everything, and they would just ask us during the most wrong times to go grab and drop fries because those boxes are too heavy for a lay weak manager. Oh, <sighs> Jesus, man. Jesus. So I would go up and, you know, see, check in, see where I'd go. They'd always throw me on grill and all that bullshit. And I knew that I was not going to get a chance. I'd have to ask again, which I'm not playing that game. Um, <clears throat> um, to, to get permission to work at a different part of the store to show off my fucking work ethic, right? I couldn't do that. Um, and the only time I did the window, I actually had a pretty bad experience. I dropped an entire, you know, food tray. It was an accident. I got pretty upset about it. And then that was understandably why I was, you know, thrown back on grill. However, the guy never, the, the manager never got back to me on anything, and this was a consistent problem that I had with this dude, is that he just gave me the weirdest vibe, like, he was such a weird creep, I mean, that's the best way to describe this hiring manager, he was like, 24, 25, um, uh, yeah, he was, it was 24, 25, and fucking still, you know, hanging out with the teenagers, and, and being all cool and everything, and, trying to be buddy buddies with people but clearly being a fake and phony fuck at the same time um th th there was also an instance of i remember one of the things that caused me to leave or made me actually really start thinking about it was when i w when i heard that one of our co-workers <laughs> uh she uh told me they keep promising her raises or they promised her a raise and i even asked her like when did they promise you a raise and i think she told me she worked there for a year, so I believe she said a year ago at the time. And I was like, oh, I'm not going to be here for any much longer. I mean, if they're going to play that game and make fa false promises to their your own and fucking employees, I'm not going to stick around for that. Um, also, just to let you guys know, I had no bad customer experiences. I've had like a few, but they were quite forgettable, and I don't remember really what happened because i don't really give a fuck about how customers treat me because if they're gonna treat me like shit they probably have a shitty life so that's what i think um anywho <clears throat> one of the things uh <laughs> that made me consider this guy to be a fucking creep as i was going home i made a work friend um i i don't really talk to him much anymore i just think it was a work relationship but however we were going somewhere and uh, we were talking about work, and this is before I left. Uh, we were talking about work, and he told me, uh, the guy that hired me, the assistant manager, we'll call him McBitch. Uh, the McBitch told him that uh, apparently came up to him randomly. This kid's 17, and this is another reason why I didn't like working there either. Uh, due to the fact I actually don't feel comfortable working with minors. And that's not because of, you know, that. I just think it's weird to me. Because I'm like 20-something years old. I should be, you know, working with people my age or older. That's how I view it. Um, he told me he just randomly came back to him and told him he had sex with his girlfriend. Just randomly. They never even interacted. He actually bitched about him quite a bit to me. Um, and I, I, I believed it for some reason. And, and this is why. Because this is how weird this dude is. He made, like, weird promises to, to us and never fulfilled them. Uh, he was very passive-aggressive and he was you know, during, like, lunch and shit, and it's like, I understand to a degree, like, I don't fully understand, but I understand that it must be stressful to, uh, be a manager at McDonald's, but 
you've worked there for years you should know how stressful it is i don't know how you can counter or think of uh, a way to combat your stress and your emotional intelligence at work but whatever and i and i believe that because the guy was just weird man like the mick bitch was so weird and also there was another manager just to point out that was another weird fuck i don't know if this was a lie or a weird lie or what i remember leaving I think this is like my at the end of my first week and i heard him uh overheard a conversation where him and some buddies this guy's in his 40s tell him this story by the way um or this or, or where i overheard this conversation and he's like oh him and some buddies went and screwed with or fucked some teenagers that were 16 but they later found out they weren't it's like what the fuck I actually remember thinking that, and I did not take the play seriously after that. I even went out of my way to avoid this dude. I never really talked to him. He was kind of a weird manager, too. I'll just call him uh, the, weird, the, the weird manager. This guy's referred to as the weird manager. He would actually yell at you um, if quarter didn't come up on time, and he, he would not listen to reason. I actually now I'm starting to remember this. It's so weird. When you start talking about it, you forget certain details until you start talking about it. Um, yeah, he would not listen to reason. And, like, they really, really worship the quarter pounder. As soon as the quarter meat came up, that was the first meat you had to grab off. Like, doesn't matter if you had other stuff on the, on the grill, you had to grab that first. <laughs> and it was just weird, man. And I remember he also, the only interaction, and this was the only interaction I had because he had one of these weird conversations. He was just a weird fuck anyways um was he was talking about generations saying oh well back in my day i did this and that well i'm pretty sure back in your day there were people um that were your age working a better job <laughs> i mean i i yeah i never said that to him i was kind of cordial but i avoided the fuck out of him i never really said much to him um and so back to mcbitch uh, there's also another morning manager I'll quickly talk about. Uh, he was he was kind of a douchebag. I mean, I heard he had autism. However, I just personally, I don't give a fuck. I mean, there was another autistic kid before I finish this story that tried to sneak off. Like, he would try to leave the work to me. Like, I understand you have a learning disability. However, that's kind of scummy and very snake-like and yeah he would literally do it too in a way that you could tell he was trying to manipulate you in a way like to do is to do the to clean up job even though both of us were back there making the mess anywho this morning manager fucking uh would get so mad at you when you were doing something else and like let's say you ran out of sausages in the morning oh my god he wouldn't let you hear the end of it Oh, I need this. You treat it like he's been missing sausages for like hours upon hours, even though they just recently ran out and I was busy doing other things. And it's like, dude, how do you not understand the fucking grill? And I, I didn't take shit from really anybody there. Like the grill people got treated like garbage, which is just funny to me because that's the most important part of the fucking store. For whatever reason, they were like, oh, we'll fuck with these people. We'll put them on, you know, the part that actually makes the store what it is, which is making the actual meat and the food. <clears throat> like, yes, the people on the on the line and stuff do the important part, too, which is putting together the meals. But yeah, like, dude, if you're going to be an incompetent piece of shit manager, no matter what fucking disorder you have, you don't deserve the title. And actually, it doesn't actually make me jealous that they were even managers or anything like that or surprised because of how they even got the position anyways. It wasn't even authentically. You just do a couple fucking tests that are apparently that easy that you could just get a fucking, you could just get a bump up. You don't need to actually be there for years and know what you're doing. You just got to take a test and pass it. There you go. <sighs> God damn. God damn. Um, I'm trying. Oh, there was another time. I rarely was thrown on the line, which is where they make the sandwiches and stuff. And the one time, the last time, this was the last time too. I made sure I never got put on line again. Only if I actually volunteered. So that way I was mentally prepared. And plus there was somebody there to help me to go through it because I would rarely get put on the line. And they know this, they know, they know I'm the grill boy, so pretty much what ended up happening 
is I was put on the line. I was working with somebody else. It was just two of us. The other guy knew what he was doing, and I'd ask him for help, you know. Um, and they fucking got, like, he, the, 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 the assistant manager, McBitch, comes back, and he's like, hey, so-and-so, I want to show you something. He fucking pulls him aside during a fucking rush, leaves me alone, making all the food, looking like a dumbass, to be honest. And I, and I actually think that's why he did it. Because the other managers, the, the, the McCarran, I'll call the older lady who was also a manager a McCarran. She was like in her fucking 40s, couldn't find a better job, apparently. And uh, she was kind of weird, too. Uh, she got mad at me, too, um, for fucking that, that same day. Because I, I didn't know what I was doing because I, I didn't have that much experience with line. They never threw me on line enough to actually get the groove of it and also to get the groove of the grill. They just always, constantly, they threw me on grill. And that one time, I was like, fuck this guy. That was when I was like, dude, you're a fucking snake in the fucking grease. Like, you are not to be trusted. Um, I don't give a fuck if you, if you have a mental problem or some shit. Like, not my problem. He was a loser. There's no no doubt about it. Like, anybody that works at a McDonald's, you're not losers. It's how you treat your fucking employees and customers. It doesn't matter if you treat oh, other people with respect. You gotta treat no matter who's in the store with respect. It was just a weird divide, too, with this place. It was like the front was its own store. Like, it was its own area, and we and the people that worked in the grill and worked with the food worked in a completely different store. Everyone didn't really know each other. It was just, it was just weird. I'm not gonna lie, it was very strange. I understand they're different parts of the store. However, I mean, treat everyone with fucking respect, please. I mean, we were treated like garbage, not just me, but the other fuckers that were back there. But yeah, he let me, he left me alone. I had no idea what the fuck I was doing, so I kind of just said, fuck it. I didn't do shit. Like, I attempted to make sandwiches. Like, I didn't want to give up. But I didn't know what I was doing. I ain't gonna look like a fool in front of these fucking idiots. Like, do you think I want to look like a fool in front of a bunch of morons anyways? No, I don't think anybody would. And so the last and final straw with Mick, bitch was uh or this actually no that was the that was strike two uh strike three was when he told me to do waste so he could cover for me because no one sadly or no one was not sadly but no one was back there to you know cover for me while i did waste this guy is such a bitch dude that i don't think he can tolerate a single pinch if he got pinched he'd probably start crying uh, because of the fact that he was trying, he was covering me for grill, right? And he started freaking the fuck out. He started treating me like, he was like, oh, come on, man. It was like two minutes. Like, what, like, not two minutes. It was like a minute. I was counting waste. And he just covered for me for just a little bit. And he was like, oh, come on, man. Yo, come on. You've been out there for, at that for a while. It's like, dude, when you do count waste, it's not just one item in there. And you have to mark them on the fucking thing. And you gotta count up every single fucking food item that made it into the waste bin. Which is just funny to me. And so my final day to cut this short, because there's a lot to this. I mean, oh, one more thing. The, the, this guy was so weird. He brought a PC he built himself. It was a gaming PC. It was a nice PC. But he brought it in to work at McDonald's. He brought his show and tell item, which is a thousand, which is which is a thousand dollar or whatever the however the fucking price is, uh, or whatever the fucking price is, uh, fucking device to to work. And he brought it like he just brought it to show it off, and it was just so weird because I didn't care. I didn't give a fuck about his computer. I was like, okay, I don't know why you're bringing bringing that to this really disgusting fucking place. And another thing too <clears throat> that I, I just think was weird that he did was that he would talk to me in such a way that it just made me feel dumb. Like he would talk to me like... I was stupid like I don't understand and and you may be thinking well you probably didn't have to deal with him a lot I worked most of his shifts and he seemed to call the shots so I'm sorry I'm not gonna fucking put up with that like I I, I worked there for six months and the day that I left oh man that was a fun day um so basically what happened I was asked to do fucking dishes and grill at the same time I know how how in the fuck does that work um <coughs> <laughs> and uh, so pretty much what ended up happening is on my 30 because four people that same fucking day didn't show up um, and uh, 
I go on my 30, and my work buddy uh, pulls up around. I, the guy that McBitch told him, to, talked about having sex, you know, and he was bragging about how he had sex, because let's just face it, his friends don't give a fuck about him. Let's be honest there, because uh, that's something you tell your buddies, not some random-ass 17-year-old. Um, he, he pulls up, you know, he was dating some chick there, and uh, I ask him for a ride home, and then he takes me home. There's also a manager, too, I need to bring her up, because, oh, God, this, this, I'm gonna call her Cunty, because I think Cunty is a very, very fitting name for this person. So, I was getting my hours cut. I have no idea why to this day, because none of these motherfuckers could give me a straight answer. Because uh, I asked about that. I asked the guy, because uh, Mick Bitch fucking promised me to get me more hours. That never happened, and I knew he was lying. I mean, it. I'm no dumbass, dude. Like, I know that you're full of shit, and you're not a very good liar. Um, And not only that, bro, this manager, I like, she was a floor manager. She was a manager, right? And so I asked her, I was like, because they talk and everything. So I was like, hey, do you know, you know, what's wrong with my pay? And she was such a bitch about it. Like, I don't even know what the fuck her problem was. It might have been the time of the month. Who knows? Who cares? And the picky thing is she was such a bitch about it. Like, she, she got all annoyed and then walked off the first time. Like, I only asked her twice. And then the second time, she went out and then went and talked shit behind my back. And said, oh, this this guy, you know, Sacred G, he, he asked me, he dare ask me about his pay and about, about, you know, his scheduling so he could get some money. He dare ask me about that. She went and said that I was being annoying about it. And it was such the most betrayalist thing ever. Because at first I thought she was better than McBitch. But no, Cunty was no better than than him. She was she was just weird too. Like it's like, why do you think that's like? Is that the highlight of your life? Like, oh, I just asked about my fucking scheduling so I can make some fucking money. Like, I'm sorry, but uh, <laughs> I mean, you weren't giving me a good enough answer. I mean, it was kind of a weak as fuck one. <sighs> I mean, not every location's like this, you know. It's just. Some, some are, and it's just unfortunate. Now, I'm not trying to derail people from working at Mickey D's. I just, I just fucking, I hate, I hated working at this location, man. It, that was just the end of McDonald's for me. I was like, ah, I'm not going to play, um, get, put my hand in the hat, and hopefully I don't pull out something that smells and st reeks like shit, and I have to keep it for the rest of my fucking life. It was, in the co-workers, too, before I do sign off, uh, they, they were either average below average or just average like some there were some cool people here don't get me wrong like they mo most of them are not in the management position <laughs> oh man and and uh i remember one time this co-worker i literally heard the manager ask him to take care of the boxes to break them down and whatnot he comes back and asks me to do it while i'm busy and i was like yeah sure i'll do it i never did because fuck you man i ain't gonna do your damn job like, you, it's, well, how hard is that? I'm sorry that you don't want to get fucking shit on your, your, your shirt or anything. And it's like, dude, fuck you. Fuck that area. Fuck that location. I'll never work there again. I'd only work there if I was that fucking desperate to work there. And it was franchise too, so those go definitely both ways. Depends, I guess. Anywho, I'm Saker G. I hope you guys enjoyed this fucking video. Um, yet don't don't take my word as that's the gospel that's all mcdonald's is is just a bunch of shitty managers no these managers were just fucking losers incompetent and just really bad at their job like they didn't use their brains uh they were just upset they were stuck at mcdonald's and one of them was almost 30 one was 40 and the other was 40 as well um so yeah this place mcdonald's you could suck my fucking golden dick so I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace the fuck out and enjoy life. Oh wait, hold up, hold up a sec. Uh, there's one more story about uh, McBitch uh, that I forgot about. I actually just remembered this as I was saving the audio. Um, there was a time where uh, apparently I was misscheduled. I was scheduled, I don't know what time. I don't remember when I started, but I remember it was 4 o'clock is what the time I got off. So I started sometime in the morning and I got off at 4. And, uh... That time rolled around. No one was telling me I had to leave because we had to be excused by the managers to leave. So it took, it was like 420, right? No one came back and told me shit. The assistant manager looked at the paper, looked at the schedule, didn't say shit to me. Did not bother to come back and say fuck all. I fucking leave myself.
I, I go home. I, I'm like, I'm not going to wait for these stupid fucks to not tell me or to, to, to slowly tell me that I can leave. So I clock out, I get my shit, and the fucking dude has the balls to tell me that, oh, uh, you know you were scheduled till a later de- time, later than four. And I was like, oh, and you know, I did the hand thing. I was like, yeah, whatever. He's like, some communication would be nice. This is coming from the guy who didn't even bother to come back and fucking tell me when I got off or there was a missed schedule. Like, dude, you suck at your job. Like, no wonder why you never learned it seemed to learn. You learned fucking emotional intelligence. You suck at even doing the basic of any manager experience ever. Because I know how you guys get that job. It's not authentic. There's no actual knowledge to be had there. So... Anywho, that guy could go fuck himself. If you're watching this, McBitch, go fuck yourself. You're a piece of shit. I hope to not work with you again. Um, Anywho, I'll see you guys in the next fucking video. Peace. The fuck out.